Preface Military history as a fragment of extensive continuum of historical learning is in simple expressions the study of mankind in war. It denotes a wide range of subjects indistinguishably connected to the military activities of the past which include social, political, human, technological and institutional aspects. Awareness of the wars from the past can help in understanding current problems and also benefit us by letting us guess what the future may have in store for us. The combative nature of human has aided him in dominating the past along with the many peaceful years that mankind presently lives in. Not many years back history of military had a specific meaning. It was purely a subject of discussion and learning about tactics, battles, operations of the forces, campaigns and weapons. It is the history of fighting where weapons and equipment, battle behavior, military organization, movement, logistics, mentality, tactical training and strategic planning are involved. Introduction The use of word military in English was in 1588 military. It has been taken from a Latin word militaris that comes from miles which means soldier. Military in general is referred to as the trained armed forces of a country which include their weapons, equipment and the area where they are deployed. It is profession of soldiers and the work that they do or the activity they perform. In the entire history of mankind every nation or civilization had their own military. How these needs are determined forms the ground of their equipment, structure and the amenities that they use. It also defines what military does at times of war and peace. Irrespective of their size and the place they belong, every military force has an official state and acknowledgement in the world. Ever since there have been civilizations, there has been military. They may have had different names, weapons and techniques of fighting, but their presence was important. With time and experience, they better their fighting techniques and defense skills. Today, military of countries are well equipped with weapons of most advanced technology. The thought of military, however, remains the same, to protect one's lands. Chapter 1. Technological Evolution Through Time Smart and innovative weapons can radically change the course of war, preparations needed in the war, training of the soldiers and costs of warfare. If the army of one country has a winning weapon, then the other country should also have a weapon equivalent to match its power or something better than that. Back in 2000 BC, when chariot was developed, it became an important addition in the military of many civilizations. While one man controlled the chariot, the other shot arrows at the enemies. Some of the ancient technologies that were developed in the area of warfare were hoplite, slinger, infantry, auxiliaries, archery, crossbows, cavalry and chariots. For the ancient people who were basically land cultivators, the infantry were their main course of action, soldiers who functioned under leaders or commanders. The early Romans and Greeks used phalanxes, which were a type of formation in which heavily soldiers armed with spears fought in battles. The Hellenistic and Macedonians made use of phalanx formation where the men fought with sarissa, which were a type of elongated spears and were quite beneficial in wars. Alexander captured many lands with the help of sarissa in his army. Later on, the Romans ditched the phalanx system and adopted the manipular system. This they learned from the Samnites. They fought successfully with this style and won many battles. The East Asian civilizations followed infantry style of military and used chariots. The Athenians used cavalry and even Alexander the Great used cavalry for victories. The Mongols, Parthians and Scythians and people from the steppe were trained horse archers. Around the 3rd and 7th centuries AD, the Sassanids, Eastern Roman Empire, China, which was then a division of three states, Shu, Wu and Wei, and Eastern Han dynasty made use of cavalry that was heavily armoured. The Scythed chariot, which was invented in India, was adopted by the Persians. Even war elephants were used to fight in the ancient wars. 
The use of elephants was again a military tactic that was used by the Indians and the Persians and Macedonians. Alexander the Great especially took this technique of war from them. Hannibal also used elephants against the Romans. Training and experience made the military better. Slowly, cavalry, infantry and artillery were used in a combined and coordinated way in the battles. Naval warfare also played an important role in the successful military. The navy ships in ancient ships sailed without any cannons. They just aimed in hitting the ships and sinking them. Slaves who were used to oar the ship, and this helped in adding to the speed of the ship, which rammed the enemy ships with more force. Galleys were used by the Cretans and Greeks, made these ships even better. The first ever recorded battle was fought between Cyprus and Supilulima II, who was the king of Hittes, in 1210 BC. The Persians used navy a lot. Themistocles brought about a radical change in the Grecian navy. He built 310 ships and ended the Persian War. In the war between Rome and Carthage, First Punic War, the Romans were leading in the battle because their navy was much experienced than that of the Carthage. The Romans built their ships with curvas, which was a device or a sort of bridge using which one could board another ship. The Romans won the Battle of Mylae with this effective change. The Han dynasty invented skull doors and rudders for their warships in the 2nd century BC. The Draca, which was a ship invented by the Vikings in the 8th century AD, had a dragon decoration in front and was propelled by oars. The Song dynasty invented ships with watertight bulk head compartments in the 12th century AD. Another important thing in military is forts. Nations have been fortified for centuries. The hill forts were used in the Iron Age to protect the inhabitants from enemies. The fort was surrounded by huge ditches which were filled with water. Forts were built with stones, wood, mud bricks, etc. The Romans built rectangular fortresses made by stone and wood. The siege warfare was used in ancient times to break into the fortresses. In a siege, the enemy army surrounds the targeted fort and blocks all means of escape. Some of the technologies and military unit types used by the military in the medieval period were samurai, artillery, mamluk, pikeman, sipahi, trebuchet, ferd, rashidum, janissary, mobile guard, condottieri, cataphract, crossbow, and knight. The Egyptians used the bows and arrows from chariots. They were experts at it. The Chinese developed the crossbow in 500 BC and was used extensively in the Middle Ages. The longbow of the English also dominated the war fields for a long time. The Battle of Agincourt and Battle of Cressy are great examples of exploiting the longbow to defeat enemies. For more than a hundred years, the longbow held its importance in the battlefields. With the invention of gunpowder in the 10th century, there were many new and improved weapons that were developed. Although gunpowder was used in China since the 4th century, but its usage in a weapon form happened only in the 11th century. The guns were held in one hand and the explosive was lighted by the other hand until the 15th century. With the invention of matchlock in the mid-15th century, it became easy to shoot from a gun as now there was just one hand required. By 1700, matchlock was obsolete and flintlock took its place. The Europeans were the first to use cannons in the beginning of the 14th century. Cannons had an important part to play in the Hundred Years' War between English and the French. The cannons were earlier just welded metal bars in the shape of a cylinder and the cannonballs were made of stone. In both the battles of Cressy and Agincourt, cannons were used. The Europeans were the first to use the fire ships in the 16th century. Ships packed with flammable things was set on fire and sent to the enemy borders. Francis Drake used this tactic on the Spanish Armada in the Battle of Gravelines. Russians, Chinese, Greek and many more countries apply this scheme in their naval battles. 
Naval mines, which were explosives placed in waters that had the ability to destroy ships and submarines, were invented in the 17th century and were used extensively in the American Civil War, First and Second World War. In the Vietnam War, naval mines were used in the North Vietnamese port of Hai Phong. Saddam Hussein and his army also made use of the naval mines in the war between Iran and Iraq. In 1624, Cornelius Trappel built the first navigable submarine, but the first submarine for military was constructed only in 1885 by Isaac Pavel. In 1775, David Bushnell built the Truttle, which is a submersible and was used in the American Revolution. Robert Fulton bettered the design of the submarine and created Nautilus, a new type of field artillery known as the howitzer that fired high-trajectory explosive shells was developed. Bayonets were first manufactured in Bayonne, France, in the 16th century, were used widely by the infantry soldiers. Bayonets got their name from the place of their manufacture. General Jean Martinet brought the bayonet to the French army. They were used by the infantry in hand-to-hand -hand combats. The American Civil War saw it being used the most, and it continued to be used even in modern battles such as in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. In the end of 18th century, balloons were also used in the warfare, and it was used in 1783 in Paris. The first balloon travelled about 8 kilometres, or 5 miles. The military earlier could see only from high points on the ground and, if in the waters, could see from the mass of a ship. With balloons high in the sky, they could signal to the soldiers below. Enemy troops could not proceed without being seen. Taipu Sultan used iron-cased rockets in the anglo mysore War in the 18th century against the British. Rockets were not as perfect, but William Hale managed to modify the rocket into a better one in 1844. The modified rocket was much accurate and did not require rocket stick. There was much development in the rifles, too. Winchester designed the first repeating rifle and they continued to develop new and improved versions of the rifles. Springfield rifles were seen somewhere in the mid-nineteenth century and machine guns soon followed towards the end of the same century. H.N. Oms was the first torpedo boat. Self-propelled torpedo was developed in the end of nineteenth century. Light machine guns and automatic rifles were seen in the dawn of the twentieth century. At the time of the World Wars, nations had invented so many different types of weapons which left the opponents shocked, while it also led to further developments when they learned how to fight these weapons. In the First World War, flamethrowers were used. These were mechanical devices which were crafted to emit long and controllable waves of fire. Flamethrowers, although of a different type, were used by the Greeks in their wars long time back in 1st century AD. The French also used the armoured car in 1902. These cars took the place of cavalry slowly. The English made the first armoured troop carrier in 1918. Most tanks built were just concept, but still needed more development. The French and the British had an upper hand in the World War I as their tanks were much superior compared to the others. The Wright brothers flew their first powered and controlled air flight on December 17, 1903, which flew about 120 feet, or 39 meters. The first helicopter was flown in 1907, but again it was not ready for use. The first aircraft took off from a warship in 1911. Aviation was an important field in the World War I. However, landing was a problem which led to the development of aircraft career with an clear flight deck. World War I also saw the use of chemicals. Gas-filled shells were used by the Germans in the Battle of Bolimov. These shells were not dangerous, but the chlorine gas they developed was quite dangerous, which they used it in the Second Battle of Ypres. Soon all countries developed gas masks which were a protection against such gases. Somewhere in 1920s, the use of chemical was made illegal by all nations. The technologies in the military were even more advanced in the World War II. Aircraft gained its importance, especially in the War of Battle of Midway fought between Japan and the United States. 
Both the sides that fought in the World War II developed radar and used the radio waves emitted from it to detect moving objects. One of the deadliest weapons in the history of military was the atomic bomb, which was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 and was developed by the Manhattan Project. The World War II had come to an end instantly after this incident. Many countries also engaged in nuclear arms at the time of the Cold War. Cruise missiles, spy satellite, nuclear submarine and many more lethal weapons have been developed with time. Chapter 2 How does history have so many records of wars and battles? The reason why we know about ancient history is because of the military campaigns, their conquests, their movements and their innovation and development in the weapons and techniques they used. In order to control the cities and civilizations, military force was necessary. This was because lands for cultivation and agriculture was less and there were limited places where vast agricultural lands were available, so huge communities couldn't survive everywhere, which led to wars and battles. Pottery and artifacts have a limited life, but the armor and weapons are designed to be robust, hence they survive for ages. Besides, they are also made in large scale for the armies to use, and their quantity helps them to survive, and these weapons have been found in archaeological excavations. Warriors and their weapons were considered sacred and of higher value, as it was not quite easy to craft them. They were placed in monuments and tombs of important warriors, and writings were inscribed on the tombs that spoke of their conquests and bravery they showed while fighting with their enemies in battle. Man used writing to record big battles and events which they thought were worthy of being remembered. There were epics written on famous wars. For instance, the Homeric writings is all about the Trojan War and other stories on warfare. The writings are realistic and mention even the smallest detail of the wars. What the soldiers wore, how they walked or what strategy they used, etc. With the growing empires, the states increased too, and there was more writings and records were required. Armies maintained the accounts of the wars they fought and other records that were connected to their work. It was obvious that while they wrote about their war and their daily lives, they also mentioned about the situation of the empire or civilization and gave the reasons to why they went to war or what happened post-war, etc. Periods in military history The history of military is a vast one, and for the better understanding of the development in the technology and techniques of the weapons, the subject of military history can be divided into five phases. Chapter 3 Ancient Warfare The period from when the events have been written and documented to the early Middle Ages is considered as the period of ancient warfare. For different places, this period ends differently. The decline of Gupta Empire and the beginning of Muslim conquests in the 8th century BC in India is considered as the end of ancient period. For the Romans, 476 BC is when their empire fell, is the end of antiquity. For the Japanese, the rise of feudalism in the 12th century in Kamakura period was when the ancient period came to an end. When mounted warriors gained their importance and Tang Dynasty set its foundation in China in 618 BC is when the ancient period ended. Culture-wise development Persia The Persians came up under the guidance of Cyrus II or Cyrus the Great. His concept was to use light armour for his infantry who pinned down the enemy or the cavalry killed them. The Persian cavalry was large in numbers, and the Greeks say that they did not wear any armour. However, one of the examples from Herodotus says that the cavalry officers wore gold cuirass under his robes. Chariots were used by them, but when the Persian Empire was in its glory, they mostly used horsemen. They also used elephants, which they brought from India and North Africa. The Persian army are mostly known for the unit of 10,000 strong and heavily armoured cavalry who carried a sword, spear and bow. These men are referred to as the Persian Immortals. The name Immortals comes from the fact when even one of the men in the unit was sick or died would be replaced immediately by another soldier. 
archers also formed an important part of their army. The strategy of the Persian army was that the archers first shot waves of arrows and killed as many enemies as they could before the conflict began. The cavalry then shot at the enemy and tried to cut the communication between the soldiers and their commanders. The disoriented and already weakened soldiers would then be attacked by the infantry. Japan Bows and horses were an important part in the Japanese army, which is quite evident from the statues and artifacts found. They poisoned the tips of their arrows. Swords were also used by the soldiers, but had less importance then. Spears were used, and the naginata, which was a curved blade, fixed at the end of a long pole, was also used. Another weapon which looked like a garden rake, known as kumate, was used to grab the soldiers by their helmets or clothes and pull them down from their horses. Egypt The Egyptians had one of the biggest civilizations, and to secure their lands they built many fortresses and small garrisons. The cities, however, did not have walls. The early Egyptians used copper-headed spears and wooden shields covered with hides made of leather. There were archers who used bows and arrows made of copper. Developments in the weapons are seen in 1600 BC, when body armour made in bronze, casting and sickle sword came in use. Their strategy of war was to defeat an enemy slowly. Weapons designed from iron and mounted troops came into existence in the late period, which is between 712 and 332 BC. The Egyptians were not quite advanced in the technology of weapons, and they took their ideas from Greece and Asia. Navy for the Egyptians was used only in 12th century BC, when they had to face the sea people. India the earliest battles that have been recorded is the Battle of the Ten Kings in the Rig Veda. Ayodhya's military has been described as a defensive one in the Ramayana. Mahabharata is the recorded proof when elephants were first used in the Battle of Kauravas and Pandavas. The Indian king Porus fought with 200 war elephants. 20,000 infantry and 2,000 men against the immense 50,000 infantry and 4,000 cavalry of Alexander the Great. Although Porus was defeated, but he gave Alexander a tough time to get inside India. The Arthashastra is written by Chankia, who played an important role in the politics and military history of the Mauryans. The book contains a detailed description of the ancient warfare of India, the weapons and strategies they used in fighting. Chandragupta Maurya was recognized by all the civilizations in his time as he had the largest army known in the ancient world, which comprised of 30,000 cavalry, 9,000 war elephants and 600,000 infantry. Macedonia and Hellenistic Armies The military under Alexander the Great and his father Philip II, the Macedonians were at the peak of their glory. They designed a way of fighting which was almost impenetrable. They also fought in phalanx strategy with the used spears. Philip II modified these spears with sarissa, which were longer forms of spears. They defeated Illyria and also attacked Athens. Alexander the Great modified the phalanx by adding a strong cavalry to and used different tactics and formations to win a war. His armies could sustain a combat for a long time. Rome The Romans were the first people to have a professional army. It was compulsory for the Roman citizens to serve in the army. They had auxiliary troops and also cavalry. They included mercenaries in their army later on. China Chariots and bronze weapons were used extensively in China. The rise of the feudal lords in the Zhu rule saw many skirmishes and battles. Qin Shi Huang was the first emperor of China who is known to have united China. The terracotta army built by him is the proof. The Chinese used light infantry, acted as the shock troops, and led the army which was followed by heavily armed infantry as the main army. Qin used heavy cavalry and chariots behind the infantry which gave him an upper hand in the wars that he fought. The Chinese wore robes as their traditional clothes which posed a problem at times. They later adopted nomadic pans for their soldiers and cavalrymen. Balkans 
The Illyrian king Bardalus had several tribes under his rule, and his army comprised mostly of Peltasts. The Peltasts were men who had different weapons. The Thracians also had Peltasts in their army, and they fought with javelins, which is a sort of a spear. They also used wicker shields. The weapons included spears, swords, romphaya, and fox. The romphaya is a curved or straight blade attached to a pole. Fox is something similar to a sickle or scythe. Germanic The Germanic were quite different from the Romans and the Greeks. Instead of pitched battles, they had raids. Unlike the other civilizations who wished to gain control of the lands, they looked forward to capturing resources. Even though they were quite often defeated by the Romans, they were tough fighters. The drawback of the Germanics was that they couldn't fight united under one command. The Germanics later in 9 AD destroyed their Roman legions when they tried to conquer Germania beyond the Rhine. When the wars lasted long, the Germanics became aware of the tactics the Romans used and made themselves more centralized and learned their way of military discipline. The Germanic tribes later on became conquerors in the ancient world and the rise of Europe and medieval warfare has been credited to them. Celtic Tribal wars were common in the society of the Celtics. The Celtics have been explained to be ones who were more interested in hunting and raiding rather than conquering a territory in an organized way. They have been known to be huge in size, but they lack the known of military. However, there are evidences which see them using war to exercise political control and take advantage of their rifles for economic gains. Chapter 4 Medieval Warfare Medieval warfare is about the military weapons and tactics of Middle Ages. Social, technological and cultural progressions in the societies changed the entire face of military. The cavalry and artillery had different roles to play now. The concept of castles emerged during this period, which also meant fortifying them. Publius Flavius Vegetius Renatus' work, De Remilitary, is a compilation of five books which explains in detail the military of Middle Ages. It is considered to be the Bible of warfare in the Middle Ages. The books contain explanation about a soldier and the skills that are required, field strategies, structure and composition of an army, how to hold out a siege as well as enact them, and the importance of navy in war. According to him, infantry was an important part of an army, as it was cheaper than cavalry and could be engaged on any type of land or region. Fortifications Europe was prone to attacks by the Huns, Vikings, Arabs, Magyars and Mongols. However, these attackers just raided the cities and returned back. They couldn't stay in a place for long. The best solution was to protect the cities for which fortification was done. The elites were safe within the castle walls. They were refuge from big armies. Siege warfare Siege techniques were quite famous in the Middle Ages, and some of the siege weapons included different types of catapults, scaling ladders, battering rams, which were machines designed to break open the walls or doors of the cities. Onager was also a type of catapult. Ballista was a sort of missile weapon. Trebuchet was also a siege engine that used the swing mechanism to throw, and Manonels, which was also a type of catapult that threw big rocks and stones at enemy gates. Other techniques to get in through the enemy gates was to dig tunnels under a specific part of the wall and then suddenly collapse it to shake the foundation of the walls. Best siege techniques were used by the Crusaders. The countermeasures for the sieges became strong, and the walls were fortified with machicolation, which was an opening through which boiling oil or water or stones would be thrown. Other safety measures included murder holes, which were openings in the ceiling, passageway or gateway through which arrows could be shot, tar could be drizzled, boiling water or oil could be poured, and even rocks and stones could be thrown. The castles were built keeping in mind these security measures. Secret tunnels were dug, so in case a city is facing a siege, the city would not fall short of water. Naval Warfare In the beginning of the medieval period, ships were used to transport troops. 
In a sea war, both sides used to fire missiles and then tried to get on board of the enemy ships so they could fight in the deck. This type of war continued till the modern period. Later on, bulky ships were developed that were driven through sails, but the strategy of fight remained the same, carry the soldiers so they could fight on decks. Improved Infantry In order to defeat the heavily mounted cavalry, the Middle Ages infantry used several missiles or phalanx, which was used by the Greeks to defeat them. Use of long pikes were common, and if wisely used, could stand strong against heavily armoured knights also. The Swiss became famous to use the tactics of pikes effectively to defeat their enemies. They had flexible formations and their strategy was commendable. Between the 14th and 15th centuries, almost all the famous princes in Europe hired the Swiss pikemen or learned their ways to be their enemies. The English and the Welsh used a long bow that used a single long bow to shoot arrows which could easily penetrate the male E which was the chained armour and dent the plate armours. The long bow was difficult to learn but those who were skilled at it could shoot as many as twelve bows in a minute. The crossbow was more powerful and was much better in penetrating and could be easily learned by anyone, yet when it came to rate of fire, longbow was much faster than a longbow. Longbowmen were better than the crossbowmen, who couldn't stand against them in battles even if they were bigger in numbers. Guns It was in the 14th century that guns made their entry in the medieval ages. Guns changed the way the naval wars were fought. The earlier guns were small pieces of wrought iron that were placed on the open decks that required just one or maybe two of them to handle it. The purpose of these guns was to frighten, kill or injure the enemies before they would jump on deck for a combat. The guns were designed to survive gunpowder charges. As a result, the ships were damaged rather than the crews. The galleys were the first ships that had the ability to mount cannons so heavy that they could sink ships. It was in the 1480s that they were put to use. As a result, the seaside fortresses were rebuilt to withstand the weapons with gunpowder. Chapter 5 Early Modern Warfare Although gunpowder was used by the back in 1044, its use as a means of weapon was seen in the Song dynasty, which quickly spread to the Ottoman Empire. The Safavid Empire of Persia and the Mughals, then ruling over India, learned the art of using gunpowder. The Mongols used explosive bombs against the Japanese. They threw them on their enemies with the help of catapults. There are many archaeological findings that reveal use of gunpowder in shipwrecks found in Japan's offshores. The year 1326 is when guns are seen appearing in Europe and this is mentioned in a manuscript written by Walter de Millimet. Gunpowder weapons were used liberally in the Italian wars of 1494 to 1559. The arquebus, which was a long gun, was adopted by the Europeans in the 16th century wars with Italy. The armoured cavalry seemed to have lost their importance with the introduction of guns. The first African commander to use gunpowder was Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al-Ghazi. He used the gunpowder weapons in the 14-year-long Ethiopian Adal War. The period spread between peace of Westphalia in 1648 and the French Revolution in 1789 is referred to as the Cabinet Screech, or the Prince's Warfare. The name so falls because there were a number of wars that took place mainly by the imperial states who were ruled by the cabinets and had limited rights because of which they couldn't purse their goal. The alliances of the nations moved quickly and there were a lot of mercenaries used. With time in the 18th and 19th centuries, the military went through a lot of important changes and developments and now had a movable field artillery. The musket was replaced by the bayonets, and the cavalry was replaced by mounted infantry. They were also referred to as dragoons. They were soldiers who were trained in infantry fighting skills, while they were also trained in horse riding. Chapter 6 Industrial Warfare The period from early 19th century and the beginning of Industrial Revolution to when the Atomic Age was just setting in is referred as the time of Industrial Warfare. This period saw development in the armies, the transportation through rails, sea and air were now at the command of the military. 
Along came wireless communication which made the giving of orders and directions simple. When man became so advanced in their military, there was a concept of total war. Spiral grooves were added inside the barrel of a firearm, so when the projectile spun as it moved within the barrel, the range and accuracy achieved was appreciable. As rifling became easy, rifles were introduced. A soldier could now target a specific enemy, and the entire group didn't have to shoot in a certain direction. The bigger units had now become more movable, as they could now move in smaller groups, covering more area. Artillery was slow and quite large, but modifications gave rise to field artillery, which was more movable. There were no fully automatic weapons that were developed. Gatling was the one to invent machine guns, and they were manually loaded, but then Maxim made them fully automatic by the end of the period. Machine guns were fast, and they shattered all formations of infantry, especially when they came in big numbers. In the beginning of 18th century, steam power to run the ships had already emerged, and metallurgy was much developed as a result. The guns and explosive shells produced were much more deadly. A single explosive shell alone had the power to drown a ship. Steel armoured ships that were run entirely on steam were loaded with many large shell guns mounted in turrets. The best design of warships was in 1906, HMS Dreadnought, which was a British warship ran on steam turbine engines, had smaller guns that were capable of sinking any ship. By World War II, aircraft played an important role in as they carried bombs and soldiers. They took less time for transportation. Airplanes were used for war for the first time in 1911 in the Italo-Turkish War. The Germans also used airplanes for terror bombings and used zeppelins to drop bombs on Britain. Submarines that were earlier meant for short dives could not spend months under the sea powered by a nuclear reactor. H. L. Hunley was the first Confederate submarine that sank the frigate USS Housatonic in 1864. Submarines sank ships, launched torpedoes, and attacked warships. Chapter 7 Modern Warfare Modern warfare is all the technologies used in the military after the World War II. The weapons of today are those of mass destruction. After the development of nuclear weapons and their droppings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, people know their power of such weapons. It has been over 70 years and people at Hiroshima and Nagasaki still tremble from its effects. Those who went to help the people after the bombings also died of radiations of the uranium and plutonium bombs. Pregnant women had miscarriages or children who were born were born disabled and prone to cancer. Even today, people in the cities have high risk of cancer. The blast was such that even the co-pilot of the plane regretted dropping the bomb instantly. The little boy wasn't quite little. There are now submarine-based nuclear missiles too. It was developed in 1960s. After the World War II, there haven't been any wars as big as that because of the availability of weapons so destructive and dangerous. War with the nuclear weapons kills civilians. Biological warfare is when a disease-bearing virus is used as a weapon of war which has the capability to kill men, animals and plants. There are also chemical weapons which are used by the military personnel to accomplish their missions. Conclusion from using sharp stones to nuclear weapons, man has learned and developed. Even though development sounds good and there are benefits associated with it, but intelligence seems to be dangerous, now when it comes to making weapons especially as destructive as nuclear bombs. Although nations build weapons at peacetime, but it is for sure that every nation has deadly weapons. What when there is total war? Would mankind survive? Are Hiroshima and Nagasaki forgotten? It is said that the weapons are made just for safety, but people dread the day when they would be used. Nations spend billions on developing high-tech weapons so they can be safe, but how necessary is this? Is it necessary that there be military deployed on every border? Have we not learnt our lessons? Do we still want to kill? There are millions of questions that come when it comes to discussion about military and warfare. Times have changed but the thought remains the same, more power and control. 
Military Today plays an important role in protecting the civilians against the terrorist activities and other emergency situations, yet military in terms of weapons will keep advancing and developing and there will be more and more weapons made to terrorize humanity. While there are some who would use it for their good, there are thousands who many not have the same thoughts. There are thousands who may not have the same thoughts. About intrabooks. Intrabooks delivers up to the minute information covering everything on a topic in only one hour of reading. Our books are written to give essential information in a straight-to-the-point, easy-to-read format. We have cut out technical jargon, waffle and unnecessary filler to ensure you get the essential information you need to achieve your goals with confidence.